Some might think a suicide awareness walk is a somber event, and we certainly have our moments. But personally, I always leave, leave feeling more connected and uplifted, more hopeful. Just by being here, just by talking about how mental health uh, is absolutely essential, talking about uh, suicide and how suicide has affected each and every one of our, our lives, because it has in some way, that is tremendously powerful, and that is helping to fuel the movement that we're seeing um, across the state of Massachusetts, that we're hopefully seeing across the country, uh, and really making sure that um, we meet the moment, and we make sure that people can get the mental health care they need when they need it. If you see someone struggling, be the light in their dark day. Be that person that comes up and says, hey, how you doing, you okay? You need anything? I care about you. I want you to be okay. And stay with them and help them get to a point where they can identify that they need help and they get the help that they need because it is okay. It happens to all of us. There's another reason that many of us have joined this cause and have come here today. It's because of a one-syllable, five-letter word called grief. I wish we lived in a world where desperation, depression, anxiety, substance use, and the list goes on and on and on. I wish we lived in a world where it doesn't exist. But it does, and that's part of why we're here today. That five-letter word, grief, there's another one-syllable, four-letter word that's fitting. That four-letter word is hope. Mental health, or, or brain health, as I like to call it, should be no, treated no differently than bone health or heart health. If you have a physical crisis, call 911. If you have a brain health crisis, call 988. I know now that most of the people we lose to suicide don't want to die. They want their pain to end. I share this so that we can support families and friends, suicide loss survivors, with more understanding and compassion.